Volkswagen, the company that brought us the people's car, the Volkswagen Beetle, is now saying that they are going to be the company that will bring the electric car to the masses with their ID3. So today we're gonna to talk about the company plagued with all the bad publicity of Dieselgate a couple years ago, and if they're going to be the next big thing or simply a compliance car. And we'll get into all that stuff here uh, shortly. But before we begin, as always, we wanna say thank you so much for watching. If you're new, consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss our future videos. We are a channel dedicated to the future of technology, energy, and transportation. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba Da Vinci. So a lot of our viewers have shown a lot of interest in the ID3. And they think that this is going to be the sign that VW and others are going to finally jump into being purely on board for EVs. But you have to remember that just because a company announces an EV, it doesn't mean that they're serious about it. You probably remember that Volkswagen had the e-Golf and you've probably never even seen one before because very, very few of them actually sold. Most of them were lease only. Even though Volkswagen had that car, they had really no interest in making electric cars at that point. So the ID3 might be different and we'll get into that. But first let's talk about what a compliance car is. A lot of governments around the world are getting stricter and stricter with emission standards, especially in Europe that have some of the strictest emission standards around. And in fact, many countries are going to entirely ban diesel and gas cars altogether in the coming years. So what companies have to do is if they wanna to continue to sell in a country like the US or Great Britain, they have to meet these regulation standards that say, let's say for example, you have to have two hybrids or EVs in your lineup in order to be able to sell cars here. So Volkswagen just does the bare minimum, makes the e-Golf sells just enough of them to qualify to sell in this country and they carry on. That doesn't really show that they have any interest in an EV future. But the ID3 is different and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about why that might be. So one thing we wanna do in the future is when we talk about some of these new cars, we did the Mazda MX-30 recently. We want to talk about if it is a compliance car or a future strategy. And on that spectrum, some of these cars are going to fall at different points. For Tesla, every car they make is future strategy. All their cars are aimed to disrupt and be a vision into the future. And then on the other end, we have cars like the BMW i3 and the e-Golf I mentioned earlier, the RAV4 EV, if you remember that. Honda had the Honda Fit EV. Again, all these cars were made in the bare minimum volumes required in order to meet the regulatory standards for renewable energy in their automobiles. Now, for the ID3, things do look very positive. For one, they didn't just slap batteries and electric motor on an existing platform. The Volkswagen Group has developed an entirely new platform called the MEB platform. This is a platform for their future electric vehicles, which they might actually even sell to other companies, along with building it for their entire lineup of cars, which is a huge portfolio of companies, especially in Europe. So that is a positive sign. The second is that they're gonna go with LG Chem and that the range for these cars is gonna be pretty significant. The second point in their favor is that they're gonna offer three battery sizes and it's gonna range from between 200 to over 300 miles in range or between 500 and 600 kilometers. And the reason why that's important is because a lot of these other EVs like the Honda Fit EV had like a 70 mile range. Again, not really entirely usable when you consider that you should keep the battery between 20 and 80%. It was really not even usable. This car, on the other hand, is really aimed to attract people who want to use it every day and, and replace their gasoline car altogether. So that's another positive sign. Now, one negative sign is that they are not gonna bring this car to the US, which isn't the end of the world because there's a ton of demand in Europe and VW actually has most of its sales in Europe. That doesn't necessarily have to mean bad news for the car. One reason why I do believe Volkswagen is serious about the ID3 is because Europe is one of their biggest markets. Unlike Honda and Toyota that sell tons of cars in the Americas and North America, Volkswagen has a smaller presence here, but they have a huge presence in Europe. And Europe is really leading the way when it comes to some of these emissions regulations and standards. So for example, Norway will ban gasoline cars altogether in the next three to five years. So if Volkswagen wants to continue to sell cars in Norway, they're gonna have to meet that standard and sell electric vehicles. The point where they have to make this decision and go all in for EVs is gonna be sooner for Volkswagen compared to Honda and Toyota. And the reason why is because their biggest market is Europe and Europe is really leading the way here. Honda and Toyota, I think, are going to drag their feet for another four or five years because they can afford to. Due to the political climate here in the US, I think the emission standards are actually getting a little bit looser than they are in Europe. And as a result, companies that sell predominantly here in the US, like Honda and Toyota, can take their time and 
maybe make this transition a couple years from now. But for VW, the time is now. The other telltale sign of a company is really serious about EVs is when you look at the battery pack prices and production numbers. First and foremost, Volkswagen is planning on making hundreds of thousands of these cars, which again is good news. They're actually in the process of converting an old factory in Zwickau, Germany over to producing the ID3s. The plant used to make the Volkswagen Golfs, among other things, and they are retooling it and entirely turning around to build electric vehicles. Now this is good news, but again, one plant isn't enough to say that they are really serious about EVs either, because again, they could just be doing it to meet the compliance requirements to continue selling in Europe. Now, if they convert two or three factories over, that probably is a bigger sign. But this is really good news, and there's reason for optimism. The Zwickau plant currently produces about 250,000 vehicles per year and employs 8,000 people. And the goal is within this year to start making 100,000 ID3s and within the next couple of years to be making over 300,000 of them per year out of this plant. Again, really good news and more reason why I think we should trust that Volkswagen is serious about EVs. Now, the next piece I would like to look at is the battery supply chain. This is gonna be another crucial element to the EV rollout strategy. And for VW, they've got a really good plan. They're gonna partner with LG Chem in the foreseeable future to start producing their cars. And they actually also have plans to partner with a Swedish company called Northvolt to start a joint venture, much like Panasonic and Tesla, that will produce about 16 gigawatt hours of battery capacity yearly. They believe that they'll have the plant up and running around 2023 or 2024, so in the next three, four, five years. But in the meantime, they're partnering with some of the big battery companies to make sure that they have enough supply for their cars. Companies including SK Innovation and LG Cam and Samsung. So they're going with a really intelligent approach. Go with the industry manufacturers that are trusted and proven while also building out new capacity. And that's gonna be important because just for the European market with the ID3, they're gonna project about 150 gigawatt hours of battery capacity required just to meet the European market. That's a huge number of batteries and it sounds like they're on track to be able to, to meet that. And with the MEB platform, they can go out to all the different battery manufacturers and make sure that they have a very nice supply chain of batteries for their cars. The other piece of big news that is crucially important is gonna be price. And the news reports are all claiming that the VW Group has secured battery, entire pack modules, at a cost of about $100 or less per kilowatt hour. And that's always been marketed as the point when EV cars and gas cars are gonna be on price parity, when both cars are gonna cost the same to manufacture. So they're already there this early on, which is amazingly great news. But to be fair, it's not really fully known if they are getting that price now or they are projecting at full bulk, at full scale, that that would be the price for let's say 100,000 orders of cars and batteries. But either way, that's gonna be the price they're gonna pay when they're in full rate production. And that again is good news for VW. I think the ID3 is gonna be the most important car of 2020. And the reason why I say that is because Tesla's cleaning up. They're doing great. There's really not any doubt. Tesla will sell their cars as soon as they can make them. But this is the first industry player. VW, a big car manufacturer, the biggest in the world. Toyota and VW kind of compete one and two uh, on most years. But this is VW saying that we're ready to do this thing. And this car is really important because if this car sells really well in Europe, which I think it will because of all the really strict regulations, it's gonna be a big hit. And plus the shape of being a hatchback is really European friendly. People in Europe love hatchbacks. They have most of the practicality of a crossover SUV while getting closer to car numbers in terms of fuel efficiency. So those are all gonna be things that we can look forward to. Big battery packs, great range, and a really practical hatchback station wagon style shape. I personally think it's a very attractive car and I really hope it does sell well. Because in the US, cars like the Chevy Bolt just didn't sell. And that's really bad news because when a company at least shows that they're trying and no one cares and no one buys it, it kind of puts a nail in the coffin and that's the last thing we want. Chevy has tried with the Volt and the Bolt and they haven't really been all that successful. I personally think that they aren't very attractive cars and the US, a car is something that people kind of buy on passion and needs to look good. That's where Tesla's been knocking it out of the park and the Bolt wasn't the most attractive thing, but it was a really well-priced car. And the ID3 is gonna be pretty similar. It'll be priced around 30 to $33,000 US, which is great. That's a great number for a car with the right amount of range. And when it comes to Volkswagen saying that they're gonna be the car company to bring EVs to the masses, like they did with the Beetle for cars 
50 years ago. Maybe they're right. They have tons of plants already. They can turn this around and start pumping these cars out. That's good news because I personally have had a very negative opinion of VW for the past four or five years. Dieselgate, if you're not familiar, was a scandal that they got caught with. So they had programmed their cars to detect if, for example, a user is hitting the accelerator, but they're not moving to basically say, okay, this is a smog test environment. This is not actual real world driving. And they would change their timing and their ignition sequence to lower the emissions to be cleaner, to fool the emissions regulators. And then when the car was driving on the road, it would be back to full power and pollute much more. This is horrible because they were the ones that said that they have clean diesel, while the other companies like BMW and Mercedes needed an additive to meet the emission standards. We don't need any of that. Just drive your diesel and enjoy your life. And it turns out they were lying and they got caught. It was a huge scandal and they were fined billions of dollars and it's hurt their reputation as a company. So again, this is the final reason why I think they're serious about this. There's a lot of companies out there and a lot of choices in the car market. And if a person has that opinion that you've been caught lying and you're bad for the environment and you're bad for the world and you're an untrustworthy company, going EV and leading the market there might be the smartest thing you can do to say, not only are we no longer polluting or making diesels, we're not even interested in it. We're gonna go full speed ahead with EVs. And that strategy I think will pay off. So in closing, do I think this is a compliance car? I don't. It is a shame that we will not get it here in the US. I wish more of these cars were available here. It seems like until they are, Tesla is gonna be the best choice. I think Tesla would be the best choice anyway, but I do wish there was more choices in the market. I initially thought when they weren't gonna to come to the US that they weren't really serious and this might be a compliance car. But looking into this further, I think they have everything in line. The price, the range is just right. If you see a car that has 100 miles of range, that's hard to take seriously because I just don't think that's a car that most people will be willing to buy. But if you can sell a car for a similar price, for example, that Mazda MX-30 was listed at over $35,000 or so. And the ID3 from VW is gonna have double or triple that range for maybe even a little bit less money. So clearly this is a value proposition that is a winner. And it's because they can negotiate huge orders and huge economies of scale on their battery side to get that sub $100 per kilowatt hour figure, which is the key to getting this technology commercially viable for the masses. And VW has the kind of power and clout to do that. They have converted an old factory over from making gas cars to purely making EVs, and they plan on making 100,000 in the first year. So based on all that data, I gotta say, I think this ID3 is going to be a hit. And I personally think it's a pretty attractive car. It has mixes of high tech and traditional. It has more of a traditional layout than the Model 3 does, which I think will be appealing to some buyers, especially older buyers who I think will feel the comfort of knowing and being more familiar with the, with the layout of a cabin. I think it's gonna be a big hit. What do you guys think? I'm pretty excited and I would love to know more about this thing. Um, I do wish it was coming to the US, but here we are. Uh, I do wish them well and I hope to see these on the roads when I go to Europe uh, in the coming years. Thank you so much for watching guys, as always. We hope you liked it. Leave us your comments, what do you think? Compliance car or the future strategy? And um, let us know what you think and what you're excited about. What are the aspects of the car that you find most interesting? And yeah, just in general, what are your thoughts on the car? Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. Share the video, that really helps us out. Thank you to all of our patrons. Your support is huge and it really helps us to do this. And I think that pretty much wraps it up for me. Thank you so much again for watching. I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci and we'll catch you guys next time.